It's Destination Yuri, I'm Rowan Hand. This is Tony McKeown of Crash Services down there uh, at my house on Mary Street. My house, because that's where I that's right. was a boy. Yeah. And not, it was 44 in my day there. Your number 40, there is not 44. 27 to 29, what yeah. What they've done with the remainder <laughs> of that? How it's happened, gone from 44 to that. And then round the corner was Madden's, the, the, the granite uh, processing yard. They made headstones and the like right. round there. So that's yeah. why that's called Granite House down there. And, uh, but you're welcome, Tony. It's good Thank to you. see you. Crash Services, of course, the people who manage everything that needs to be managed when you have a crash uh, on the roads out there. And goodness gracious, very important to have you there because it's a yeah. complicated enough time, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I think what's happened, people only have an accident once every 10 years. Um, so a lot of times when people come to us with accidents, they, never, they don't know what what to do. Yeah. Uh, they're confused um, about what their rights are. So somebody's there uh, able to give them guidance. Is that what we're there for? Mm. You lift the burden a wee bit. Yeah, I mean, as I said, there's lots of things to organise after you have an accident from getting your vehicle recovered, organising the repairs, dealing with the insurance companies, mm -hmm. the police sometimes. So I'm, not, I'm really a minefield about what you need to do. And as I said, we've been at it 18 years now. Wow. Um, so yeah, we've good experience. In, in good dealing, experience. Yeah. And ultimately, does it cost the person who's had the ex accident anything? No, we don't charge anybody whether at fault for the accident or whether not at fault for the accident. We don't charge. Uh, we recover our costs from the insurance companies involved. In the, I in think the that's a lovely idea. Yeah. This is one up again, not that you do it for that reason, but it's one up against the insurance companies who take so very much money from us and who need so very, very little in order to do their job. Statistically, that's the case, isn't it? Well, I think I think people would would uh, acknowledge that the insurance companies that the, the, it's a it's a mandatory purchase uh, insurance. No choice. Yes, but and I think pe people um, not all insurance companies, but a number of them would, would be looking after their own profits as opposed to looking after the customer's interests. There's, yeah. there's always going to be a conflict there between the two. They, they have to manage their, their, their own costs, uh, and what we would always say is uh, as long as customers get their full rights after an accident, then that's what the, the, they're entitled yeah. they're entitled to get. That's why they take out insurance. Yeah. Watch that uh, that that wire. Your hand is yeah. going to pull. It out there we want to keep yeah. it loose so uh, not only do you do that but you're proactive in the business of trying to bring about safer motoring on the roads and earlier this year you introduced Northern Ireland the competition to find Northern Ireland's safest young driver yep. on the roads and that's where a lot of serious accidents are occurring young yeah. drivers yes and uh, now you've gone on an all-Ireland basis and your All-Ireland champion is coming in to me today at 12 o'clock. That's right. We're yes. interviewing him and we'll have him for you tomorrow. Yes. So what's the thinking behind the safest young driver? Well, we, we brought out um, technology um, last year um, called Black Box Technology. Um, and what it does, it monitors how the vehicle is being driven. Um, it's really been, been used uh, for young drivers and for fleet drivers. Uh, those are the two biggest, um, you know, they have a lot of high frequency of accidents, people who drive for work and young drivers when they're inexperienced. So we brought out this technology to complement our services. So we, we, as you said earlier, Rowan, we deal with people when they have an accident, mm. but to add to our services, we brought out, we're trying to prevent accidents as well. Uh, and I said in those two, those two areas. So what we decided to do, to really introduce the technology, because it's, it's, it's young and it's, a, it's an emerging, emerging area. It's like a nap. Uh, is that what um, they're called? Some, yes, there, there is a, there's an app, uh, an app with it, with it within, within the function, but oh. our, our device pretty much is a black box which is fitted into the glove box, and behind the glove box, which monitors how a vehicle is being driven. Is it hard to connect up and all of that? No, it takes about 45 minutes for, for a fitter to, to put to, to, do to, that. Put, to put in. Yes, mm. it, only, it, only, it, it goes off, it detects power off the car battery, uh, but it's pretty much a standalone unit. It doesn't go in, into, the, into the engine management unit of a vehicle. Oh, yeah, yeah. So the great thing about it is our particular system, uh, and that is really, you can get as many different boxes as, as you want, but mm. the, the real science is actually in what they call the algorithm, which which takes all the information from the box uh, and gives you a driver score out of 100. So every journey you do in our box will give you a, a score out of 100. Mm. And how you lose marks are things like displaying um, um, that you either uh, braking harshly, uh, cornering aggressively, uh, and accelerating to, to, mm. too fast as well. It's those type of things there that that that, that uh, highlight erratic driving behaviour, and that's what really we want to try and identify. Mm. If you can identify who the, who the erratic drivers are, then you can do something about it. Yes, yes, and ultimately bad driving leads to increased premiums. 
Well, well, if you've escaped the absolutely. ultimate sacrifice of your life yes. and, and serious injury. Yeah, well, I, I think the real, the real thing is that what, what they're talking about, Rowan, is those young drivers, 25% of them have, have an accident. Every, everyone, when, and I was the same, and part of your same yourself, when you, when you were that age, you wanted to get on, pass your test as quickly as possible and get on the road. And I think what, what, what the research is saying is the quicker you pass your test, the more likely you are having an accident because yes. you're not learning, you're not getting experience. This yes. little device there, uh, where it's, and it's been used by a lot of insurance companies, this type of device, where they want to monitor the driver and coach them after they pass their test. Because mm. what you do when you're sitting beside a driving instructor is totally different from you're out, in your mm. out in the road on mm. your own mm. or, or your friends are out there. So as you said about the competition, the competition was really to, to generate interest um, amongst for, for young people to say, listen, if you want to be coached after you pass your test, th this box is a great idea. Mm. The other thing is there's nothing to fear from it. If, you're, if you drive sensibly, you will have a good score. So it's really trying to make young people aware of the technology, and that's what, what the success is. Do they buy the box from you? They can buy the box from us. Um, uh, where, where it's been mostly used is insurance companies uh, offering young drivers a discount. For if they have it. Yes, for putting yeah. this device and in. And of course, if, if a young person has the box and is using the box for three years, say yes or a year, and uh, he's got 9 out of 10 from yes. the box, yep. and then he has an unfortunate prying. Mm -hmm. He goes to court, and the judge says, well, I understand this is a one-off. You had 9 out of 10 for the last two years. Yes. So, well, no, we'll not put you to prison. We'll simply give you a warning. That well, kind of thing can happen too. Well, as I said, we haven't had any precedence on that to see, if, to see what, what a judge would say. But yes, the, 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 definitely the box could, could give you just um, mm. show your history of, of, good, of good driving yeah. if, if it was there. So we, we had a, a fantastic response to the competition. We went we're all around colleges all over Ireland. We were in Tralee, we were in Cork and Sligo, Donegal, uh, Waterford, all around the country trying to recruit drivers for this. We ended up getting 48 drivers that we, we put into the competition. Um, over a 10 week period um, those drivers were assessed mm. um, and the driver with the, with the best score won the prize mm. and it was remarkable that we had a, a young student called Dean Zereri um, who Where's he from? He's from Jonesboro Jonesboro, yeah, yeah. but he also goes to St Coleman's College in Newry just finished his A-level this year so um, people sort of joked and said a Newry based company and the winner's from ten, uh, five miles up the road yeah. it was a total total uh, chance the, yeah. the second person was from uh, Dublin yeah. and the third person was from Tipperary Wow. Uh, who's a student in, in, in Limerick College we met there um, so Dean had a great performance there, Pip the rest, it was a very close contest, but he, he came out on top. Um, his prize for, for, for displaying good driving behaviour was free, effectively free motoring for a year. His wow! So he's got, um, he's got uh, fuel costs covered, um, mm. um, uh, maintenance costs and uh, insurance as well. So the prize values up to 4,000 uh, euros and is what he won. Being a young fellow, and as I say, we'll be talking to him uh, on the programme tomorrow, being a young fellow, uh, he he his skill set has improved dramatically as a result of his awareness of the presence of the box because well, he's thinking i want to drive properly yes. so that i can make an impact here yes i, th I think the the, um, the challenge is for, for a lot of young drivers is is that when insurance companies look at young drivers uh, 25 percent of them have an accident in, in the first year until this device came out the insurance companies couldn't decide who was the safe driver and who was the high risk driver so they had to charge them a high premium because um, they didn't know they didn't know who, who they yes. were so this device actually identifies um, the good drivers and I think the, the challenge for for um, for people like Dean Dean was probably a good driver anyway mm. Um, mm. and and um, so it's probably improved him slightly but we don't know until people we don't know how people are driving without the box in and with the, when the box is yeah, in, because yeah. suddenly they change the behaviour when they know it's being monitored. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, crash very seldom. Your company stands still. You're thinking ahead all the time. Uh, what, what, where are you taking us next? Do you think? Well, I don't know. We have a few, a few uh, ideas we were thinking of, um, but uh, any, like any new idea, it takes time for it to, for it to come to come. In. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we'll wait and see. We're not going to make any announcements at the moment. What about what about the notion of a second uh, examination for a young person? A young person passes his test. Uh, he is told, right, you're now free to go on the roads. Uh, go be a good driver. I remember when I passed my motorcycle license. Mm. The wee tweedy man with a pipe in Lisburn who was giving it to me, signing it off, and he says, there you are, Rowan, he says, there you are. 
You look after that license. Nice phrase, look after that license. Yeah. I be a good driver. So the young fellow's got his test and the, the examiner says, you look after that license because in six months time, mm -hmm. you're going to do what we might call uh, an A-level in driving. Yes. To me, that would seem a very good idea. I think, Rowan, what, what you're seeing at the moment is, for in, in the young driver area, uh, lots of places around the world have, have introduced what they call a graduated licensing um, system. Um, in the Northern Ireland Assembly, there's a number of, of, of changes to, to the driving um, when people are passing their test or being, um, uh, are being proposed uh, at the moment. There's about I think, nine changes mm -hmm. um, to, to um, how, how young people pass their test and what they do yes. in, the, in the immediate aftermath of that. Uh, it'll be remain to, see, to be seen how many of those those points come into legislation. Yes. But there's always a debate about: Do you have a, a like? Is it, is it one year after you pass your first test? Is it ten years? Is it fifteen years? Mm. Twenty years? So it really depends on what's going to come through legislation in the next couple of years. I think it'll be very interesting. What are you seeing coming across your counter in terms of uh, frequency and likelihood of accident and what type of accident? Put the young person is the young per he is, presumably the young person is top of the league uh, well, I think uh, where else do you go yeah well I think anecdotally what, what, what we would hear about about um, young drivers and, and you see it, it's the cornering it's, it's young drivers you know t too, too much speed losing for, it yes too much speed for the conditions and that's what they mm. say it's not about doing 90 mile an hour on a motorway it might be doing 50 mile or 60 mile an hour on a country road going around a new a, a bend and not being able to ha handle those conditions they haven't been in that situation before mm. and, and losing it that, that's the type of uh, accidents you do see among, among, amongst young drivers is inappropriate speed um, in, on, on, on rural roads uh, is, is definitely one that we, we would see but across the board it can happen to anybody um, we've, we've had probably three of our own staff have involved in accidents in the last um, uh, three months mm. uh, and they're varying ages so it can happen to anybody I think that's what you you know yourself is, is, it, is it is it um it only takes a second to make a mistake. Oh, absolutely. And, and everyone, you can be distracted yeah. when you're driving. Yeah. Uh, anything can happen. You can be busy late for an appointment and you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you make a mistake. Yeah. So I think, yes, there's a higher frequency amongst the younger drivers uh, and people who drive for work, but it can happen to anybody at any time. Absolutely. In a sense, you know, what you're doing is a, it's a sacred task almost because you're about the business of saving lives on the roads. Yes. That's what Crash is doing. In, in, in this particular Ideally, issue, yes. you do yourself out of business. Yeah, well, that's what people people do put that to us all the time and say, why, why, why are you doing this? But I, th I think it's it's really it's just complementing our, our business. We we do th we do see the emergence of this technology coming in. Yeah. There, there's there's a, a good chance that this technology will be inbuilt into vehicles uh, in the future in the next couple of years. The legislation coming out that that, that, that they need to have um, e-call buttons, and where that goes. What's an e-call button? It's where you're able to hit, press a button and get through to the emergency services. Um, in the event of an accident, wow. that's what they're talking about putting into all, all, all goes. yeah, all vehicles uh, yeah. In, in the future, so they get a quick, quicker response. Mm -hmm. So there's, you never know where technology is going in the, in, in the future, mm -hmm. but it, the, 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 there is. It, it would be very easy for manufacturers to put this type of telematics um, technology mm -hmm. and, and to monitor the mm -hmm. driving style in the vehicle at the time of the manufa at the time of being manufactured. We shall get you to fit a box in my glove compartment, <laughs> and we shall see over a period of one month how good I am, oh, and you will come back in. I would love to do that, Ron. And you will talk to me about it. <laughs> Great. And if it's bad, we'll not tell anybody. No, we'll keep it, we'll keep it uh, <laughs> dumb, as they say. Look, Tony, thank you very, very much you, indeed Ron. for yeah. coming in. That's Tony McKeown yeah. from Crash Services down in my house on Mary Street. Was Good. number 44 when I was there uh, 65 years ago, uh, but now it's number 27 and 29. Yeah. See, I, I could do it. It's great. Good luck. Go yeah. well. Thanks, and thank Ron. you for keeping us safe on the roads. Okay. Thank you, Ron. And tomorrow, tomorrow, sorry, Andrew, tomorrow you will have the man himself, Ireland's safest driver, a young student out of St. Coleman's College in Newry, on the programme. So look forward to that. Andrew, music, please.